this featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, we have finally had the two teams favored going into play-ins face off against each other in an epic best of five with everything on the line. For BDS, it may not have been completely smooth sailings, but Jungler Sheo has shown brilliance using aggression and creative pathing in order to give his team strong leads in the early game. Sheo getting <laughs> clever. Here comes the Bear Cavalry. Licorice is not ready. There it is. A nice bit of Gouda to get things kicked off. Cut out for him, though, facing the last remaining team from the PCS and their superstar, Junjia. PSG talent has not dropped a single game, and Junja is showing exactly why he is so feared domestically. He's now in the meantime. Croc might just go down here. He's not got flash available. Junja does, though, and he looks for sales as well. Carry BDS to the Swiss stage in his rookie year. Sheo needs to take down one of the toughest opponents yet in Junja, who is looking to take the PCS into the next round and remain undefeated. Welcome back to Worlds 2023 and the featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, PSG Talon versus Team BDS for the last spot in the Swiss stage. PSG are the last remaining team from the PCS. Kieran, the hopes they're region on the shoulders. They go against, go against the BDS that have bounced back the last few days. Yes, BDS has been looking great. A lot of it has been, I know the featured matchup was looking at the jungle matchup, and I think that's really important because Sheo and Nuke have been, to me, the most important part of it. Of course, middle jungle, core of the map, and I think them being able to perform a little better around Cranny has made this a lot more of a solid uh, matchup today. Yeah, also super excited to see the first series of today. Um, uh, coming yeah. in with this oh, uh, BDS ah, yeah, okay. ah. And I think it's, uh, so as we already talked about with the, with the junglers here, I think that this is by far um, the strongest jungler we have in all of play-ins. You know, I was memeing a bit with Glory, but Junjia has been my MVP of the tournament. I think it's just been looking like he's been playing a Smurf game most of the time when he's yeah. playing the game. He just looks uh, unleashed. He looks a cut above the rest and uh, the best jungler in play-ins. Yeah, he has been absolutely unleashed, especially like on the Jarvan in the early game. He has been taking over. But I do think it's interesting playing against Shio because while Shio can get active in the early game, yeah. I think a lot of his success actually came in the LEC from counter jungling, getting info on the enemy jungle, and making it hard to find those ganks. So we'll have to see how that plays out today. Yeah, very true. And I I think versus the Team Wells matchup, Sheo had some really <laughs> poor games. The Gragas one, I think we want to scrap from our minds. Absolutely. But that, that's why in some of the replays that we saw coming into this matchup, uh, I really enjoyed a Sejuani ganks. Um, I thought he was incredibly creative. Uh, I'll credit towards their coaching staff and go to one as well. I think this team, when they are un in form, no one in the playing stage can beat them. The problem is just that we've seen individual failures that have put them into really tough positions. Last series... Game one, huge lead. Welcome to the inconsistency of BDS, buddy. Is it the best team? Is it the worst? We don't know. It's, it's impossible to time. know. One Does thing I do know, though, one thing I do know is there's a big experience gap between these two teams. Obviously, uh, PSG. What the hell? PSG are coming in with 110 Worlds and MSI games on Maple. Nuke's got se those seven games, by the way, are the seven games they played this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is also the inexperience that BDS has surely lacked in some of the matchups where no one is really stepping up to be the voice that will make sure that the show calling is clean. No one's really having a nerves because I think nerves has been the thing that plagued BDS a lot, specifically against that Team Wales series that they had. And on the side of PSG, well, they're all veterans at this point. They're all more experienced than they are on BDS. Yeah, and I keep referencing the interview from Maple, calming down Junja before the series, like the, his first series at Worlds. So like, it's- TSM Brass. What? <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Take it easy. I'm just a fan of Maple. He was in the LPL too. There's, that's two for two, okay? Uh, and like, and Maple, there's a reason why we talk about experience. Oh, yeah. And he has the talent around him. This is the series where he comes up big. I'm looking forward to well, it. Well, the most experienced player on BDS's roster with 13 whopping games at Worlds is Adam. And we caught up with him after yesterday's series to get his thoughts on how BDS should have improved after their upset uh, loss versus Team Wales in the Verizon post-game interview. Welcome back to Seoul for the Verizon post-game interview here with Adam from BDS. Congratulations on making it to best of five. It was not an easy road for you guys, but you guys made it. Talk me through this series, chaotic first game, second one a bit more clean, but how do you guys always do it like this? Nothing's easy with you guys so far. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, I, I, I knew that we would kind of win yeah. um, today because after the loss against the Team Wales, uh, we had a lot of discussions about what would work the best for us. And uh, starting from yesterday, I think we've shown pretty like clean performances. Uh, apart from today's game one, which is, mm -hmm. I would say, I mean, BDS is not 
like we always have this tendency to go a bit slow, you know, sometimes. But uh, once we're in, we're in. So. Can you tell me a bit more about the way you reflected on the games yesterday? You were saying that you know which way you should take. Can you tell me more about this and the uh, learnings from this one? Yeah, for example, if you take a look after the loss against Team Wales, I was really, really frustrated, uh, really angry yeah. uh, towards myself and also towards my teammates, right? Uh, because, of course, when you're at a world stage, you should not be happy, right? And you should uh, also take accountable, you know, your teammates if they do something bad. So uh, this is why, you know, we after this we had kind of a big discussion, mm -hmm. and then we we worked all together to really see like what actually is the best for us. Okay. And um, in game, I think now everything's good. To be fair, so I'm really glad. All right. Uh, <laughs> my analyst over here trying to hide from me, but so I've we got were a little bit for of a Raz pen. He dropped it. Yeah. Ah, he dropped the pen. I that makes to throw sense. It at you, sadly. Yes. I do want to talk about uh, some of the adaptations I've seen BDS make because they had a really nice series of map movements uh, in their game yesterday. They were forcing a lot of barons, uh, and I have a little telestrator to show all of you with their pressure on the map and specifically looking for an early herald off of good back timing. So here we can see that BDS are coming back onto the map with Shio. Both teams have their bot laners rotating into mid. Because because Harold's going to be spawning in the next 30 seconds and they want to fight for it. But I want you to keep your eyes on Nuke because he walks all the way through top lane here and is going to set up uh, to just walk in with Adam as this wave crashes. He's not on any vision, completely covered by that control ward there. And as the wave comes into turret, he steps up so they can get this tower. He also had perfect information on where the rest of Flying Oysters were on the map. So this tower goes down very, very easily. He even sets up the sun disk immediately after it. Now, while this is happening on the bot side of the map, there is a push going going out from the Aatrox, and then in mid lane as well, Kaisa is first to hit the wave. But these three players from BDS are going to be able to get into mid before the two supports on uh the CFO side can actually get in there. So they reclaim Pryo on this mid wave, but their three players, Nuke gets a big push in top lane. And also Adam runs into bot lane to pick up the wave that shoved in there just a moment ago. Now, while the Aatrox tries to roam back up into mid, BDS actually recover priority in all three lanes because they were bullying out this position in the river and had vision control. Now that the Herald spawns, CFO try to walk in to secure that. And Crowny seeing them just steps up and is full push in this mid wave. At this point also, we've seen Adam get the push into bot lane. Nuke is moving down too. So while CFO try to use their numbers to get into the river, they realize very quickly they have completely lost them. So in this sequence, when with losing Pryo in all three of their lanes, they lose a tower in top lane. They don't get the response tower in bot lane. And this Herald goes over to BDS while well, they just take a reset, accomplishing nothing. BDS got a massive lead off that. You know, that's a really good telestrator. And I, I really love the wave bouncing as well where you can see that they have to respond to uh, the push coming through from Adam immediately so they can get prior again. Another thing I was a big fan of was the full send it mentality. And I think this came out of the interview that Adam had as well where he said that, listen, we needed to get something going. We were too inactive. And I think Baron starting when you just see one member off the map that's going for a bad recall and you just take it immediately. That was something that BDS kept going for again and again and again in their last series. It saved them in their game too when they had a Callisto and they really fall behind off the level one. But just being able to, hey, yes, if you have a lead, just being able to really pressure them. But also if you're falling behind, you need to find a win condition, find a hole in vision. And they were able to do that in their final series. Yeah, it's important too, because in their loss versus Team Wales, they were not decisive. They kind of stalled out in the mid yeah. Game didn't do a lot, so seeing them go for the Barons quickly is a very, very important. Now we can switch gears and see who our fans predicted to win in our MasterCard fan predictions. Every day, you can head over to at MasterCardGG on X to participate, and the results are in From now, now, almost. PSG at 40%, BDS at 6%. That is right in the line right there. Yeah, right. damn, a fan prediction of 50% as well. We might as well just throw a coin instead. Yeah, that's a Point shocker flip. for me. I mean, a PSG just does look really good. And this is going to be the toughest matchup for Adam so far in the top lane with Aja. Aja is going to be a menace. So that's, that's the matchup for me that I'm looking forward to the most. Top lane matchup, jungle matchup, both incredibly important. Now, it's time to find out the last team for the World's 2023 Swiss stage as Team BDS and PSG Talon face off. Asheen, Mark Z, take it away. Hello. It's a little that's, earlier. It's a little yeah. earlier than we were expecting. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, my mic in the right spot? <laughs> I was like, what do I do with my hands? You know. But welcome, one and all, to the last of the best of fives, last of the series here in the playing stage, PSG versus BDS. We are the neutrals. We are the people who get to 
to come in and be very, very neutral. We're not going to have any LEC biases or anything like that. You know, we're going to see how this all plays out. And normally you would see my face on a new European cast and go, damn it. But here's what I'll say. I have cast a fair amount of BDS series. They have not dropped a game while I'm casting. The one series they lost and they got reverse swept or whatever, I wasn't there. Yeah, and I got the pentakill for Crownie as well, so, you know. Us two together, yeah, you know, might not be positives. your first pick, but you'll take us. Pretty, I mean, look, you gotta take whichever you can right now. It's very early in the morning. Well, not as early in uh, Central Euro, but we are gonna jump straight into picks and bans. PSG on the blue, BDS, BDS on the red. And I'm curious right now because this is kind of a matchup where we're kind of saying like PSG have kind of just looked good, whereas BDS have been ramping up bit by bit. Yeah, I think it's a interesting play in so far. You see the value of double Elim, the fact that BDS had a bit of a weak start day one. They've bounced back. Their first series that they won against DFM, it wasn't super convincing. It was slow and steady, and they weren't making super proactive plays. They seemed happy to just scale and win. And then yesterday, they were starting Barons. They were 4v5, yep. and they were they were going ham. So I really like them gaining confidence here, now going up against PSG. One of the teams you would probably have expected as kind of a matchup to get out of play-ins as a perennial powerhouse. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people's pick are going to be uh, very upset with this particular matchup. I think a lot of people would have said BDS and PSG to get out. But with all the bans coming in, one tree was banned, one shall be received. Therefore, they get the Maokai on the side of PSG. PSG. It opens up a pretty big kind of hole right now because if I know something from PSG, Maple on Jace is kind of disgusting. He played a ton of Jace in the regular season of summer. Uh, he and Maokai can combo together. We saw it even yesterday, though it did not win the series against BDS. You saw how powerful it was against them. Almost able to take that one down. There was a lot of snipes on the crowny. So we'll see if they can combo that Jace. Of course, the other Nuke or Adam are uh, really Jace aficionados. So they're probably not going to try and pick it away and separate that. Duo and instead going for the Sejuani, which is what they played last time in the Maokai. Yeah, it seems to be the kind of Sheo specialty right now. I know when we were, I was casting the last series of, of BDS with Dagda, it is a kind of a, a little bit of a kind of sore spot, the jungle pool for Sheo. It's kind of like, right, if he doesn't get Maokai, if he doesn't get Sejuani, where does he really go? Ivern. So, uh. Yeah, the Ivern unfortunately found a way as well. But Rakan has been a huge pick as well, so that's going to be going over to the side of Labrov. Just, it, it, honestly, it's such a blindable support that you can put it with almost any matchup. And the Zaya off the board, it means that any AD carry can really go there either. But for PSG, I was going to say, they're going to probably lock in their solo lanes here. I don't think you want to leave open the Jace this low and going on. So you get the cannon, you get the Jace, you lock in your top side. And that is scary as all hell. I kind of like the early cannon at first. My initial reaction is, why are you picking this so early blind? But knowing Adam's champion pool, most of them are not yeah, great. Could you cannon. name it off for me if that's possible? Uh, like, dogs, Darian, yeah. Olaf, <laughs> Darius, Olaf, Gary. <laughs> Instead. Uh, no, we're still waiting for the O in Olaf. Uh, we'll see if he ends up playing it here, but most likely not into Kennen. I mean, at six, maybe you can all in, but otherwise getting there is, is going to be pretty difficult. So we'll see when he wants to go there. Nuke going to tried and true. Azir, absolutely huge pick for him yesterday. There was a game where they were controlling 99% of that game. Almost lost the entire thing, but Nuke was able to save it with his good Azir play. Yeah, I mean, the good Azir play and also the, the legacy of Sharima Tower killing off the Kaisa <laughs> yeah. right before they literally nearly ended the game. So, you know, it's all it's all mechanics. It's all part of the skill of the game. But now we're going to see a lot of focus coming out from BDS, just trolling in those support bands, making sure the Rakan has a good time. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Nautilus ban, just something that can deal with that kind of front load and engage. And then for the side of PSG, honestly, just start finding a way, maybe even top laners or, or even AD carries, to be perfectly honest, just take away things that can maybe kind of burn down a lot of what you're trying to go for here on this basically dive comp. I like the respect Callista ban, something that people had not had on Crownie's radar until yesterday, and then they saw it and they go, hmm, <laughs> that looked bad. <laughs> That's a beep. <laughs> that was scary. We're going to ban that one out. Uh, so yes, getting the respect ban after one game on the Callista. Uh, we'll see if he ends up going back onto Ezreal. Ezreal's ear is a pretty common combination, but didn't love the early Crowny Ezreal, but maybe again that was that day one nerves where the team was not playing well as a whole. We'll see if he goes back to it here, looking like it based off these bands right now. And that's the thing, Crowny has been, when he's been given a, an AD carry that can have agency, that can kind of go forward aggressive, have their own kind of self kiting tools like the Zaya, which we saw yesterday, or sorry, the day before. That is the kind of crowny that we do expect to kind of be able to pop off. When he is on something that's a little bit more safe, quote unquote, on the Ezreal, that's kind of looking to more kind of poke things down before going aggressive. It's not as in impactful, shall we say, but the last band going to be that Renekton coming in here. So BDS, they're probably going to pick up an AD carry, leave Adam for that counter pick. And I mean, then PSG, they're kind of just going to bring it all back. I mean, the Kai'Sa for me, in a lot of senses for PSG, would work very well here. Yeah, you would think with one of the S tier AD carries band, you just go to the other one, but we haven't seen a ton of crowny Kaisa actually yeah. so far, so might be a champion that he doesn't really want to play, generally speaking. And I will say in the current composition, there's not a ton of dive to combo with, and 
you know, you can Kaisa technically slots in anything, but she's absolutely at her best when there's other dive buddies that you're going into. And right now, that's not how their comp is looking to function. Looks like a lot more front to back. And the Ola, excuse me, the uh, Scion blind is definitely leaning more into stable front line, front to back DPS. Yeah, gods. Uh, you gotta add the S, yeah, the, add the S at the you end. Just learn a little bit. You <laughs> yeah, you're just a little tired. Because you know? <laughs> you've heard it so much. And Scion honestly. also gameplay, put yeah. you to sleep. <laughs> Straight up, honestly. But, well, we'll see now the Alistair locked in here. So it's kind of adding into that kind of front loaded engage. You're going to go in with the Alistair, maybe even have a flank with a cannon, and just kind of come in from all sides. The, the kind of AoE advantages you have with these ultimates from PSG is kind of nuts right now. And see what they want to try and put in. The Kai'Sa would make a lot of sense here for them as well, just to kind of, again, just add in someone who could just all in and just try and blow up a character. Yeah, I think Kai'Sa and Jace combo together well because both have longer range skill shots that you can land and chunk, chunk people up at the start of fights, but Jace with Dustblade going hammer form and assassinating someone and using that intangibility to run out is often a really good combination that Zaya can, uh, excuse me, Kai'Sa can also follow up on. And we see this Zeri locked in after a continual round of nerf still pops into the meta here and there. And Makes some sense, like we said, playing more front to back in this team composition, not wanting to lean on the Ezreal as much here because Kaisa can have a fun time against Ezreal if you ever get ahead, especially if you're going the lethality build and you're just pouncing on the Ezreal over and over again. So instead, they go Zeri. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like if, for BDS, the longer these fights go on, you have things like a Zeri and a Nazir, just and a, a great front line, you will start to kind of burn through these health bars very, very quickly. If they can just survive that first kind of initial attack from PSG, PSG kind of run out of options very, very quickly. They'll need to kind of almost reset the fight, kind of back away, and then come back at the fight from a slightly different angle. Unless BDS can kind of, you know, basically make a big mistake there, I don't really see how PSG can really kind of get around that. No, I mean, you basically either poke out at the start so that BDS can't walk forward, or like you were just saying there. And so, very interesting game one is a best of five here for the first time, obviously earlier, previous series as well, but it was rest of best of threes until plans until now. So the advancement matchup to see who goes to Swiss stage will be decided here, and both teams opting more standard, get a feel, see how the enemy team's playing before you make your bigger adjustments in game two. Absolutely, and look, which is stronger, LEC's fourth seed performance at Worlds or BDS in a lower bracket kind of run? That's Ooh. the kind of question we got to come out of here right now because this is something that is going to be very much watched by a lot of different people. I think a lot of a lot of uh, spectators expecting both these teams to make it now only one can. So you got to put your best foot forward. You got to start off the way you want to carry on. And for BDS, they have to make sure they hit the ground running. Yeah, big redemption available here for the European fourth seed as a whole. It's had some struggles with Mad Lions in the past. And day one was scary, but they have rallied and looked a lot better. They also knocked out Golden Guardian, so some successes thus far. But of course, you are playing, hopefully, for the Swiss stage. And they have a tough opponent in PSG who is almost always there as one of the powerhouses, like we were saying. And PSG, that's the thing. It's like BDS the fourth seed from LEC. Four seeds for LEC and Worlds. Swiss stage would be nice, but this is... P PCS's only seed left. This is the only thing they have to really kind of continue on with the, the, the tournament. So the VCS already got their seed in. They were guaranteed after the way the bracket went. So PCS, they don't want to fall down as a, you know, kind of a, a playing region that's not able to send their first seed off to the to the grander stage. Yeah, and I think relying on Maple, who has come back to the PCS after that stint on TSM in North America, instantly back on the world stage, joining the number one seed with PSG uh, and helping guide them. I think you've seen a lot of Maple's strengths on a team that can function and follow his leadership. They showed that graphic. 110 games of Worlds. Ninth most. I believe maybe ninth, moved up yes. to eighth. We'll have to check if it's going to go up at any more through play-ins here. But very, very impressive leadership out of him and helping lead this team through a difficult play-ins. Yeah. For BDS, they're kind of one. These players are looking to make that kind of legacy for themselves. They're very, very Most green. Single digits. Yeah, literally almost all single digits, if not at the start of this zero. And I mean, for you know, for people like Crowny and, and even Adam and stuff like that, it's kind of been a, a, a stage they've been looking to get on for so, so long. Obviously, Adam had done it before, but it just feels like it's this is the team they need to try and perform on. And for Crowny especially, it just feels like it's been a, a long time coming. Yeah, and we'll have to see how much Adam can do on this Scion pick. I did call it boring. However, there is the other school of thought, the Bow school of thought, made in Europe. And uh, we'll have to see if Adam wants to go for some annoying proxy farming, dying 10 times, ulting down lanes left and right. And it does actually kind of match up with the way that Adam somewhat plays the game, where he is more roam focused, more willing to take aggressive plays um, and try and have a big influence on the map. And Scion can't do that quite well. 
boss standard made in Europe or fined in Korea. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if they appreciated yeah. it. <laughs> I don't know exactly how they feel about it, but Cheo, full clear on the top side, now looking to see if he can maybe make something happen here. Waves in a bit of a bad spot for Maple. You can see he really wants to try and just kind of get this one going, but right now just very, very aware that I don't know exactly where this Sejuani is, and Cheo is very, very patient for the moment. We'll see him now finally revealed. Gonna see flash for flash. Nicely done there by Sheo. Always worth trading your flash for the mid laner's flash. Yeah, relieve some pressure, a limit what Maple can do in the early game, and then just continue your clear onto the bot side of the map. Sheo already getting involved in. This is an interesting game to think about what each team's game plan is early on. I don't think there's one lane that you're necessarily trying to snowball. You, as PSG, probably want to get some wards out, isolate Asha so you can just keep pushing and add him over and over again, get some chip damage down that turret. And for Sheo, you can technically go to almost any lane at six, especially. They'll all have setup, but there's not a single one where you have some game plan where it's like, we got to hold down this or save this lane. It's just, if we can get this to your head, nice, or Zeri or whatever, but you don't have that many winning lanes naturally. It's a pretty even early game. And the thing as well with BDS and how they've played so far this play-ins, it has been, you know, up until the last series, very reserved, very kind of calm, cool, collected, don't need to go for anything too crazy right off the bat. But, I mean, this composition is perfect for that. The Scion will keep infinitely stacking. The Azir is a late-game god, as we all know. And the Zeri is doing Zeri things, pew pew. And uh, <laughs> this is this is kind of the way you're going to go for it. But now Shale looking for a regank here into this mid lane maple. Yeah, he's going to have the Hex Flash jumped on top of him. They will get the knock up and the CC down. The first blood goes over to the Rakan, and BDS are on the board. Lebrov and Sheo comboing together again. They were fantastic yesterday as well, working together to make a play happen. Sheo burning that Flash early and instantly the repeat gank to punish it. On the reset that came in, Lebrov just showing up after clearing a ward bot lane instead of going back there, actually continues up to mid lane, linking up and making that play happen. And here, Adam. Yeah. Very aware that Junji is right there. Yeah, very aware. And you can see him just kind of constantly just staying closer to his towers. So there's no real chance of a CC. Chain coming in. Now Junji is going to realize, oh, I'm caught between a, 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 a hog and a very large man. Uh, but uh, going to be able to walk out without any real problems right there. Adam, very respectful, knowing that his wave was pushing away from him. So he needed to try and just back away so he didn't get caught. Yeah, it's still slightly annoying for Adam, the fact that he couldn't get the wave in. Asha can kind of freeze it here. Junji is hanging around, making it annoying. We'll see if they can actually turn this kill. It will be difficult with Adam having his flash available. Yeah, I don't really see them kind of going for this one right now, but Asha is going to be able to kind of freeze this very, very effectively. And this is where the matchup really starts to become difficult for the Scion. And yes, he won't die, but he won't exactly be thriving either. No, you are a low econ tank jungler. You know, you take your... Money stashed in the <laughs> put it in your cell case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're not. There's no investments coming long term for him. He is <laughs> gonna be holding on as best he can. And I think it does put more pressure on Crowny and Nuke in these situations then, because I think Adam has been one of the most impactful top laners thus far in a meta where I think top laners have had a good showing in terms of impact. Nice combo from it. Nice. But uh, yeah, I think you you've seen Renekton's take over games. We've seen. Rest with his Aatrox having good showings, even though they didn't win that game. You, you've seen that this is a pretty good meta for top laners if you're in one of the more bruiser champions to, to take over. Yeah, absolutely. I think for Adam, I think a lot of people were expecting Adam to kind of obviously, you know, continue with those bruisers. A little bit of a slightly different look here with the uh, the Scion low econ tank in the top side, but we'll see if it has the same kind of impact. Again, Scions have been throughout the meta, just one of those picks that you can always go back to. You can always rely on as the, as the worlds and metas change because it's just that reliable. That decimating smash is so good. Just keeping the wave nice and trimmed down. Yeah, and even when he doesn't have the best itemization in the world, like you said, just so much in the kit that allows you to scale up and be a front line. And I know there's a question of how good tanks will be. Currently, it does feel like they are behind some of the bruisers and carries. But if it looks like a good angle for it, you can always make it work. And uh, on the flip side for PSG, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Waco. He's someone who I loved watching at MSI this year. He is incredible, and I. Want to see them get a little bit aggressive here soon. Start when the sixes come in. Hopefully find some plays with Junji and not just seed everything. Because this is what we kind of saw at a CFO. And BDS was very happy to punish it. And it's something that I feel like is sometimes a detriment to the PCS region. Where they are just too happy to sit back, scale, not contest objectives, not really go for anything. And then it's third dragon, you're 4k down, you're on soul point for the entire rest of the game. Yeah, and you then have to fight every single moment of every single objective. Because there's nothing you can really do. And now you can see with Wako 
knowing that the dragon just went down, he's going to have to play so respectfully because he doesn't have support. And that means a free uh, turret plate goes over to the bot lane. Crowny going to drop down a ward as well to make sure he doesn't get caught out by Woody. But, I mean, right now it's it's pretty solid here from the side of BDS. The difference in the gold is literally the kill. That is it, and that dragon now as well. But nice combo. Not really going to lead to much else you would imagine. Maokai is coming, but knows he's on a ward, so no nature's grasp to really make this one happen. I will say Labrov going to bring the Maokai back over the wall. The Bramble Smash should just be able to kind of deter any other engages. But yeah, I mean, PSG, I mean, they look for something, but it, I don't think it was there. I don't think it was ever there. No, just <laughs> you land a combo, you see where it goes, and you don't want to flash, you don't want to burn any ultimates, so you just take it and go. And yeah. again, the scaling continues. I think from a scaling perspective, PSG is fine. Uh, Wako and Maple are obviously going to be fine. We saw exactly how good that can go. With Jimmy in yesterday, his Jace was incredible. Kendon will always be a threat to squishy backline members if you can find good flanks. But BDS is a very, very good team around objectives. They're willing to have a proper setup, start them, force you into them. And again, I just will have to see if PSG ever wants to get aggressive prior to that. It is still only eight minutes, and here they are starting off their own objective. We had a little chat before we came online, obviously, in the green room, and we were saying, you know what? If this first game starts like that last game from GAM and Team Wales, we'd be very happy. I think it was like 27 kills in 22 minutes or something like that. Yeah. I don't think we're getting that, Mark. No. I don't think so. I think no, it's I think slow and steady, sadly, does win the race for either of these teams. We're about to start talking about all the rotatoes going on. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, the bots oh, are in, You're in Ireland. You like potatoes. Oh, yeah, there the you go. crossover's there. There you go, man. The, 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 the crossover the e we never potato knew. Crossover. We never knew we needed. And you know what? We probably still don't. <laughs> <laughs> we thought about it, reviewed it. Shut yeah. down. No, thank you. <laughs> BD came back and said it's a no. Uh, but... I mean, yeah, I, like, I mean, for BDS, you're scaling. We've talked about that many, many times, but I feel like it is going to come down to with that first big fight, potentially around this next dragon in three minutes, because you're going to have access to all those ultimates. You're going to have the slicing maelstrom and things that can just kind of close in on top of people on BDS. And on the other side of it, BDS are going to have so much time to kind of, you know, keep everyone at arm's length. This could be the big moment that kind of breaks this game wide open, or like most of the time in these kind of series, I could be completely wrong and nothing will happen. Yeah, maybe PSG will sack it, cross map, go yeah. to the strong side, where they have the cannon, get some uh, plates down, down instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe we'll just have no conflict. PVE game mode. Whoever farms best wins. They just agree at 30 minutes. Whoever has more CS. The 1v1 All-Stars. <laughs> like, yeah, first to 100 wins. Oh, no, the, yeah. the Kalen mirrors are oh. just farming. <laughs> yeah. No. Not the best. Cool Not the idea. best. idea. Execution. <laughs> They definitely should have banned certain things, just like holistically. It's like, yeah. these are not allowed. Gamers <laughs> are very sweaty, and they will find the optimal way to play, <laughs> yeah. regardless of how interesting it is for viewers. <laughs> it's a fun game mode. No, <laughs> it is not. It is Caitlyn Farving. All-Stars is a fun event sometimes. Uh, I like the tandem mode. That was fun. Uh, yeah, the arena? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, I like that kind of like, you know, 2v2 kind of setup. Hopefully we get it back soon. That was uh, probably the best game mode we had since the since a rounds got induced. But. Juiced, introduced. I'm still, I'm still spamming A-Ramps to this day. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Dracos did not have a good good day yesterday yeah. on the rift. <laughs> the the, the A-Ram MMR has gone down. Dramatically. But, yeah, dramatically dropped on our A-Ram AM, MMR. But we'll see now what's actually going to happen here. One minute, minute 20 until that dragon. It looks like PSG not willing to sack side lanes just yet. I'm going to try and put down some pressure here in the mid lane. Shelly will get her charge off doing her favorite thing in the world, which is bonking her head against large buildings. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just trading it. Crowny's just untouched here on the bot side, so, I mean, this is just kind of how the game's going to go. We might see it engage with this dragon because there's decent war control from PSG, but I feel like it's going to back away and just try and, yeah, just, just posture around, lose this vision, unfortunately, for themselves. Yeah, uh, a little surprising to see Shao decide to go in there and trade alt for alt on the Alistar. It will make engaging on Alistar a lot riskier if you are going to get there first and have your vision set up, and Alistar is one of your primary engage tools. It's kind of nice to force that one out. As this dragon will be spawning, it won't have it available. The question is, do PSG even test? I like trying to break Maple out of mid lane, funnel some gold into him if you can make it a little bit riskier for Nuke to potentially try and wave clear if you can break that turret, but still three plates up. And then the flip side, I like BDS's response of kind of just ignoring it, letting it happen, and Crowny getting his own plates on the flip side of the map. The big thing is now we're going to see, yep, Just Blades has just been finished up for Maple there. You've got first items onto the AD carries for the moment. TP will be available for Aja in a couple of seconds. It's just setting up for a decent spot here for PSG if they want to try and contest and take this dragon. Yeah, we'll see if 
Aja can get his recall off and finish a Mythic. That would be huge to get this Dragon Contest more in their favor. You can see them already working down some of the wards here to try and find him a TP angle. Well, TP's going to be coming in. That's Nuke on the bot side, just trying to keep himself separated away from Junja and Maple. There is another TP ward there, pink just behind the red buff, so that could be a place for Adam to look for a bit of a flank. You can see now the dragon going down very, very closely, and they're going to try and push them off. TP from the cannon coming in. They've already caught out the dragon, and Kagan out the Sejuani. They're trying to turn back in. A slicing Maelstrom lands onto quite a few members. Can they finish them off? That is the question. The Scion's a beefy boy, but not that beefy at this early stage. One for none, the Dragon goes to PSG, and they felt comfortable, and they got themselves the win. A huge exhaust by LeBron basically saves the team from getting wiped there, but it's still a big win for PSG, getting the kill onto Sheo, getting the Dragon away as well to stop this stacking. Here you can see the ultimate ridden in by Junjia, kind of forcing the rest of BDS back because they had a really nice flank, and Woody, despite having no ultimate, still goes in there, makes the hero plane, is able to get out, set up the cannon. And like we said, there's the exhaust stopping most of the damage from coming through, and you can see Maybe LeBron would have died. Adam potentially would have been a much easier chase forward if all those health bars were either gone or down at, you know, 10%. Yeah, you definitely feel like with a Kaiser shotgunning into the backside there, if that if that slicing Maelstrom does it, all the damage it should have done, that's a very different story. But it's now one to one, evens on kills, evens on dragons. And it does feel like this game is just kind of scaling up a little bit more and more, but PSG know they have the tools available to them to make these plays happen. They could look for it once more again, potentially at this, ooh, Crowny. Yeah, I was gonna say, if he gets stunned there, he is almost certainly going to die, so has to flash away. Very unfortunate to lose his summoner there. Yeah, a nice little punish by Aji. Getting in, getting the lightning charges down, forcing the flash. He did not have his own, because he used it in that dra dragon, uh, dragon fight, excuse me. And here I gotta say, I do appreciate the aggressiveness out of PSG. Yesterday when watching CFO, that was a situation where maybe they just go for the Dragon Contest and then back off, but PSG wanting more, finding their angle, and Aja being the main focus, having that cannon picked early and kind of calling out Adam's champion pool, looking pretty good right now with a 40 CS lead, being able to get way ahead, able to have a big impact in these Dragon fights, and putting BDS now on the back foot after what was a really nice first blood in mid lane. Yeah, it really was, and I think that uh, Aja is kind of being able to, you know, he's got the coal, stacked it off, sold it, got himself very, very far ahead. Now, Adam should be able to finish off this turret, so it should be a trade on either side. Both these teams tit for tat for the moment as they look to try and just gain as much resources as possible. And with PSG picking this early kind of, you know, top jungle mid very much in the first three picks of this draft, it makes sense that they had a lot of a priority here. It makes sense that, the, you know, the top half of their map is the one that's getting ahead. Yeah, I think so. I, I like the decision here. Getting Aja, getting the Rift Hill at the same time, most likely going to drop that one mid. BDS, like we said, going for more of the cross-map play, knowing that PSG has overloaded the top side of the map. You can see the goal difference over time, powered by AWS. A nice recovery for PSG here. And I think it's going to put pressure on BDS around these neutral objectives to have better setups there where they're not all corralled on one side. They have this front-to-back team fight. You highlighted the flank ward that potentially Adam could have gone to. The impact of a flanking sign is sometimes negligible. The rest of the team does not <laughs> It's follow. the deadliest. <laughs> yeah, you like you do your ultimate, you miss it, you go flying past, meet up with the rest of your team. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, can, it can be a little underwhelming. And I think with the amount of poke available for, for PSG, it does put pressure on BDS to find their own good setups. Because if you're just getting chunked out, forced back by Maokai Saplings and ultimate every single time, I wonder how they want to approach these in the future if they are going to try to flank Adam next time instead. I, just, I love that you brought up the flank and kind of how Adam's not really on that bruiser, as we mentioned earlier. He's on a tank that the, the impact is not as high as it usually can be. And unfortunately, I'm going to, you know, kind of have to make a comparison is that if you ever watch the LPL, if you ever watch some of the Azirs we have in the LPL, specifically Xiaohu, he's the flanker. He's the one going Bananas. for the crazy place. Yeah, but that, that's the kind of impact he has to have because when the Shy was kind of on these things like the Scions and the Orns and stuff like that, it meant that he had to be that impact player for his team. And I feel like Nu kind of has to facilitate that role as well. We haven't seen a ton of uh, crazy Azir engages yeah. out of Nu. He's yet. more the, the <laughs> step back, use it to disengage, go for you know, consistent DPS. Whereas, like you said, there's a lot of Azirs at Worlds waiting in the Swiss stage who are way more on the engager side, the setup. And if BDS are going to win the series, maybe that's the role they have to take. So that way, Maple cannot just sit back and poke with Waco until they find their own time. We've got a lot of time. We've got plenty of time. We actually have 45 seconds of time until potentially the next uh, fight as the Dragon will be spawning. But 
You start to see now where these teams want to try and highlight. I will say, Adam not fi finishing up his first item really does hurt now, right now. He really would love just to have something to kind of go for. And I will quote Jamada on this, is that gold doesn't make a big difference. Item completions change how the game is played, and that's just kind of so key when you're looking to try and contest these objectives. Yeah, I understand what Adam's doing here. You have double magic damage topside if the jungler ever comes up there, so you go your Merc Treads early, and then even grabbing the Negatron Cloak can help a ton to negate a lot of that. But does stop you quite a bit if you're not going to just finish that item first and you're instead going to go back to what I assume will be uh, Jack Show. We'll have to see where he ends up going. The Jack Show makes a lot of sense here just because of the you'll stack it up fairly quickly and you'll be able to stay alive while you've stacked it up. So uh, that's kind of the value of it. But Nuke now pushing up towards this top side. Do they look to try and burn down Aja before this really goes down? He will just clear out the wave back themselves away, which means PSG get full priority on this bot side. They'll get themselves at the second dragon. There's an old ocean soul. And I mean, look, we talked about how patient and calm PD BDS can be, but they seem to be a little bit behind on the plays right now, because that's a tower for a tower and a dragon. So PSG are already coming out on top of this trade. Yeah, I mean, PSG definitely have a bit of a tempo advantage just from the fact that Asha will be uncontested in side lanes and can get kind of first move if he wants it. You can see there, BDS without the Scion having his Mythic, perhaps is the reason that they are saying, okay, let's trade this. It's just second dragon, absolutely fine to give this away and continue to scale. We already talked about their scaling options are incredible. Crowny and Nuke will both become monstrous threats in the mid to late game, and they did not have the easiest angle in there. So strategically, totally understand why they, they played that way. Yeah, I mean, they're looking for Adam in this bot side, but he is still a Scion, so you have to be very, very careful. They're taking a hell of a chunk onto that turret, though. Should be cleared out for now. Just about keeps it alive. But, I mean, we saw the level difference now between Adam and, and uh, Aji, or Aja, excuse me. It just feels like it's getting more and more further and further. It's 50 CS now between these two. And, yes, I know we keep mentioning it. It's a tank jungler. It doesn't make that big of a difference. A massive cannon is still scary. It's not about the Scion at that point. It's about the Zeri and the Azir having to deal with the cannon. Yeah, and especially LeBrav as well. Being on point with your exhaust. If you're ever engaging and trying to set up and leaving your backline exposed and you're not in range to exhaust the cannon, it can be a bit of a uh, contrasting priorities where you're like, I'm yeah. the engage. I'm no longer there to peel yeah. if, if the cannon goes in. So this is a lot of pressure on him. And I will say, I think LeBron has had an incredible tournament so far as I cast a curse him. Uh, maybe nah, cast a curse him. He maybe was delivering Junja to the rest of his team, but no real carries there. It was the front line fronting up. The Jack Show finally finished up there for Adam as he finally feels he has some kind of presence within this lane. But, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think Labrov has had a really solid tournament so far, has really stepped up for his team when he needed to. I'm thinking more specifically, you know, kind of being that facilitator, being the, t the guy who needs to step up. I always think of the Braum game he had just recently there. And it just felt like he was on point with every unstoppable every or unbreakable every single time he needed to put down the ult to kind of kite for his team. See if he can do the same, because like you said, he's kind of got an unfortunately, you know, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't situation of I go in or I don't. And either way, I kind of screw my team. Yeah, and I thought the, the Tarek game yesterday was great as well, yeah. having that little splash of creativity in your champion pool, because he is a lot of the times kiting back with the Braum. He is most played is Rakan, so he is, of course, great on this champion as well. And here it is. Primary engage, of course, you have Sheo if he can snipe someone out with an ultimate and make it, make it easy for the rest of the team. Or if Adam can land a huge charge, great. But otherwise, it's probably going to be him having to start a lot of the fights off for the side of BDS. Mark, how are we doing? With, know, with, with two <laughs> kills in 20 minutes? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're LCS, I'm LPL. This is, this is slow by any standards. 0 0.1 combined kills per minute is uh, the oh gameplay I like right. to see. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm a pacifist. I know, but it's just... Unless I'm playing... I'm an entertainer. I'm okay. a murder hobo in games yeah, yeah. in real life get, pacifist. Get those Baldur's Gate 3 going, you know. <laughs> no Everyone one is safe. must die. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saving our village. No. <laughs> Do you have XP for me? You yeah. will die. One XP? Give it yeah. to me. I'll take it. It's like that uh, Mega Mind meme. It's just like, I wouldn't say saved. I would say under new management. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's <laughs> great to see where it's come to the next big play. But I mean, look, Baron is on the table right now, and it was something that PS or sorry, BDS were willing to do the last time. As we see PSG finally pushing in to clear off most of this vision. There is a ward or two that's kind of hovered around around this Baron pit, so there is potential to kind of spot out what is going on. But I don't think PSG are going to pull the trigger on this anytime soon. No, I do like uh, BDS kind of... The way they've been moving away from PSG and some of the power positions that they've been in, I thought yesterday BDS flowed between their plays very well. And I think in a situation here with how much damage they have on Baron, they can look for situations where PSG 
falls asleep at the wheel, you can maybe get damage over the wall. Zeri can hop walls, Shao can hop walls, and you can, of course, hit from free from behind. And so there are some tricky plays for BDS here if they ever choose to do it. And yesterday they showed a more aggressive look where they were willing to kind of flip some objectives. And maybe that's one of their avenues here. If they're trying to avoid straight up conflicts, maybe you can look for some tricky barons. But PSG is kind of all over that right now, given that the next dragon isn't spawning for another 45 seconds. Adam has done a thousand more damage this game than Crown. How? Yeah, that's the, the maths in my head wasn't computing right there. So uh, I did get a, a little tidbit as well. Carney is 12 and 5 on Zeri uh, Pog. For, for this. So, you know, big, big pogs, big pogs. Uh, but uh, thank you to Depa, our producer, for giving me that tidbit of information. But I mean, hasn't had the same little impact. He is two items now. So this could be one of those things where you bait out someone. You know, you haven't fought them in so long. Now all of a sudden they're huge. <laughs> yeah, well, I think this is the time to actually start a contesting objective. Like we said, Adam completing his mythic item getting some more in his back pocket, as well as the two item spikes available for both Nuke and Crowny, actually. Nuke and Crowny coming in there. It's a two and a half item maple, though. This Jace accelerated shot glasses are smashing. Aja looking for something on the side here. They know he's there. The vision is being hotly contested. No one really has a full control, but it does feel like BDS are the ones more comfortable with this situation. Yeah, starting this one up, Aja is in the bot side, flanking a little bit, but BDS have control of the Dragon right now, leashed down to that side of the map. And Lebrov is marking Aja, knowing that he needs to keep that exhaust. Oh, it's going to be Adam, popping down his ultimate to get out of that particular fight. Now we might see the dragon taken. That's going to be soul point. Now PSG, there is the flank. And they knew he was there, but they couldn't stop it. The cleanse comes out after Shao Tree and the Glacial Prison. It's a fight on two different fronts. You can see Crowny trying to see if he can put down damage here on the backside. Ooh. Doing decently into Maple. Pew, pew. Can he do the Zeri things? Everyone's flashing away. Nobody dies mark just how i want it no bloodshed on the rift the objective taken everyone disengages i gotta say shale has been incredible with his smites this tournament long there's been very few contested objectives that he has not gotten this time around Junji is getting the better that's two smites i believe that were contested both yep. going to Junji at these and now the dragon stacking is truly a threat to bds on soul point for psg and a nice disengage by both teams. I like the way Crowny and Nuke both get over the wall where they are then safe, but able to still DPS here. And while the exhaust was slightly late, it was not onto the actual uh, backline member. So Aja goes in here, finds this kind of angle. Lavrov does not actually get the exhaust quite down initially, but Crowny's over the wall and safe. Nuke was also safe that entire time. And they're able to keep kind of DPSing here safely without having any threat onto them. And then Crowny hops back over the wall and forces PSG into full retreat mode. The problem is, when you do not fight consistently, flashes are always available. Yeah. And the thing about BDS's comp is it actually has more mobility built into it outside of the initial kind of engage from Waco pressing alt. But Crowny has multiple, you know, mobility spells in your E. Obviously, you can shift in on the Azir. But with all the flashes available, it's so easy for PSG to disengage once the fight no longer looks good. And this is actually when I want PSG, or excuse me, BDS to get more aggressive. While the flashes are down on Maple, maybe you can find a play onto him. Yeah, well... Talked about the junglers, our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz, Junja versus Sheo, and so far Junja has had the winning of it. Aja has a flash. Wasn't going to go into Crowny there, but I mean, it is all about the junglers right now. And with so little kills going down, it does become about these big objectives. If you can get that smite down, you change the dynamic of the game as Junja has, because now they're on soul point. Yeah, exactly. You're on soul point. Also, it's an ocean drake. And so it'd be great for BDS Huge. against some of this poke and some of the saplings and the annoying things that can come through if you can actually go ahead and get some free regen when you get poked. Not the case so far, and if PSG is able to grab this last dragon, there'll be no more ocean spawning. And from then on, the poke will stick. They've got a couple of dragons to get before then. Uh, 15 minutes or so of time before they would even really kind of go. You know that. what? Yeah, let's sign up uh, for it. Let's go to seven yeah. dragon dream, no <laughs> kills. Just just keep PVE in a way. This is like murder on me right now. It's like I'm building myself up. Like here as, it is. As an it LPL cast, so you got the scratch. Yeah, I know, right? Dude, you were supposed to be the Penta Penguin, or what is your title? Yeah, Where, what Penta is happening? Penguin. I don't know, man. All right, I, I used it all. Okay, I got three Penta kills in, in, you didn't in a save week it for your best of five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> Crowny just had to get it beforehand. They were looking a bit shaky, you know, but. Oh, I mean, there might, there's still time. We are getting to the point in the game where pentakills are actually far more likely than anything, to be perfectly honest. We are playing two of the leading champions all time with pentakills yep. in competitive play. 
Zeri is not number one yet, I don't think. I'd have to double check it. She, she might be. She, she might have overtaken. She might be just below it, because I know Gala got a couple of pentakills towards the end of summer. Kaisa was, I think, the number one. It was like yeah. 100 something pentakills across all pro play. Yeah. And then Zeri coming out, you know, <laughs> years Zeri later, released, shot up the yeah. scoreboard. I think she's number two now. Ta -da! <laughs> like, Jinx is three, I think. I, I forget the list. At one point, I looked it up because I was like, kind of devalues pentakills on yeah, Zeri. There's like, so many. There was one week where there was just like one in every major region. Yeah. So Whoa. Pentakill. Oh, maybe pentakill happened here right now. As you can see, Sheo gets a little bit caught up there. CC down. He's going to lose Saka Shock, and he gets taken down. Wako with one kill. There is the slicing Maelstrom to try and slow the retreat. The exhaust comes out. Aja has to back away. He's taking a lot of damage, and he flashes out. Adam is TPing in. He's going to ult straight away, you would imagine, to try and catch somebody out. He knows he's just too far away. PSG found an opportunity. They got rid of the jungler, but there's still not really an opportunity to go ahead and take that Baron. No, PSG were feeling hungry there. If they get another kill or two, maybe that is the Baron that they could take. But again, the nuke Azir just being so relentless with the DPS forces Aja back, chunks him out, gets the flash out, able to basically stall that Baron play with the chip damage that he returned to PSG. And so while it's a nice pickoff onto Sheo, and that is normally the most concerning member to lose a round of Baron buff when the enemy jungler drops, they did enough to stop PSG. See the team fight damage there. As, as you just mentioned, Nuke doing exceptional work there to make sure he was keeping his team in it. Adam TP did and did zero. It's rude to put him on that graphic yeah. at all. <laughs> that bagel is because he wasn't there. Yeah, this is, it feels like we should have something to kind of, dis, you know, kind of take away uh, champions when they're not actually involved. But now we come back in and look for a fight. Aja, no flash this time. So can't really look to engage. Whoa, Junja looking a bit aggressive there and going to take a lot of damage. And they shot on the backside. Wacko looking to take out Noob. Good flash away from the Shurima ultimate. And now he's taking out Noob. The ultimate from the Maokai keeps everybody in place. And a double kill for Wacko as the Scion is now dead. Sheo running for his life. It's looking like it's going to be an ace. Not quite, though. As you can see, that the Shizwani should be up. No, he's been caught. And there it is. Ace five for none. PSG, they were just as bored as we were. <laughs> Wako had enough of this slow gameplay. Just goes in on his own and breaks the ankles of BDS, mechanically outplaying them to win that fight, get soul point for his team, and set up the Baron now for PSG, breaking this game wide open. Huge moment, and Wako deserves every single bit of praise right now, because Junja, he overextends. Yeah, this is one of those classic Maokai, whoa, going on a ride. You do not mean to do that. And then this is a moment where Wako sees his angle, but with Flash and Ultimate oh still available God. for Nuke, this is a dangerous play to go for. Wako was getting super hyped up at MSI for a reason, arguably the best marksman player in the playing stage, showing it off here, making a monstrous play for his team. I mean, huge, huge moment there for PSG. And I mean, for BDS, it was just it was just a really unfortunate moment there where Nuke and Crowny were separated. Because that's why Wako felt so confident going for it. He goes, if I kill the Azir, no one is going to be able to hurt me. So he was right. And, and now BDS, they find themselves 7,000 gold down, an Ocean Soul, a Baron against them. They need to try and pull something out of the hat. Yeah, and I, I can respect BDS showing up for these plays. I think there's been times where BDS is sometimes a little too inactive in the game, where they are not showing up to contest things and they're seeding objectives or they're looking at the enemy and not going in. This time around, honestly, it's mostly been both teams show up and PSG just plays the fights better. They were trying to be against, aggressive in the Dragon Fight two fights ago where they tried to chase down, but there's too many flashes to disengage from PSG. And I think it's a question mark of do they have enough buttons for Adam to make plays? This feels like a competition that they are not able to quite execute the vision of. I like that you brought up Adam as well because it feels like this is just not what we want or what we expect from yeah. him in the top lane. Like, this is not how he performs. And even we were talking about it in the green room on the day they lost against Team Wales, where it was like even on the 1 and 5 Renekton game in game three, he still looked like the best player. And it was because he's <laughs> oh, going again. forward again. He's pretty tanky and they're going to have to try and help him out. He will eventually go down to the tower. Crowny picks that one up there. Eventually, he does get punished for going a little bit too far forward, but the base has been cracked. Yeah, fortunately enough, Aja was just pushing down in the mid lane there, able to break that one. But maybe Junji should stop pressing W on Sheo when he has his Arctic Assault up. Not going to relieve quite enough Adam. pressure to force PSG back yet. Oh, Adam, he needs to try and make a play. He knows it. He tries to flash in aggressively. Nuke 
does eventually get away, but only to get hit by the Q, not quite going down. And you can see Wako kind of corralling them, pushing them in, saying, you can't fight me right now, I'll take a free in him. And look at the power of the Ocean Soul, Triple Ocean Dragon, putting PSG back to full after stuffing that engage from BDS. There's no need for them to back off here, despite being in a 4v5 situation. They grab the mid inhibitor on the tail end of that, and they're just gonna keep pushing. Keep going, get themselves the bot inhibitor turret, maybe the bot inhib as well. And they go for a little bit more. They only have the bar in front of the 30 seconds, so I imagine it's take this and get yourself back out, spend all that lovely, lovely gold. It looks like it's gonna be exactly that. They're even gonna buff up the minions in mid lane just to make Shadow's life that little bit harder. But I mean, BDS, I think it's fair to say they're in a hole. They are in a lot of trouble. I'm glad that they were able to find a punish there. Adam went for a play. Flash Q on <laughs> Scion is hard to pull off, though. God loves a trier, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't say he didn't try his absolute best, but yeah, I mean, I, it kind of looks like a little bit of, I don't want to put too much, you know, words in, or feelings in anyone's place, but a little bit of frustration there. Adam kind of going like, we need to do something. I need to do something. And on a champion that's limited in terms of playmaking as Scion, that's all he's going to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame Adam. I like he's having a bad game as Nuke is in trouble. Oh, Maple, blue suede shoes, just with the quick step. Yeah, the back step there, baiting the ult out of Nuke, finds that kill, and that might be game, honestly. There are neutral objectives not for two minutes, and they have open inhibitors in mid and bot. They might just try and walk in here, guide these super creeps in, and use this ocean soul to sit on top of BDS and just chip these turrets down and force BDS to engage onto them. Yep, Aja has got a stopwatch, and he wants to go super aggressive, flash and slicing Maelstrom. He's going to TP, excuse me, he's not going to TP, and that's going to be Maple, the Spear of Shoujin, oh to kind boy. of finish him off. There's even a GA on Waka, so even if he goes super aggressive, I'm watching Junja to potentially be the one to go aggressively onto this, but they can just keep everybody here, keep everyone pinned back in their base. Asha's doing this work, he's taking away the turrets. Yeah, they're fine. I mean, even if you're not going to end the game here, it's keeping BDS corralled completely in their base with that Shojin. They can go the double shock blast for acceleration gate, a little busted, I'll say that, and uh, just poke down the next turret. You're going to have triple inhibs. Should you not be able to end the game immediately, you can at least use this pressure to fall back to the Elder spawning in Baron in a minute and a half. Triple inhib. I don't even think they'd want to try and maybe even try and flip it. They want to try and end the game right here, right now. It's going to be on to Sheo and Adam, or Adam now gets caught. He's going to try and have to run away from this one here. I don't think he's got the health bar. He does not. He's fallen. And the rest should fall with him. They haven't got a mini wave just yet on that second tower, so they have to wait a little bit longer. Adam trying his absolute best, but the towers have gone down. The turrets Whoa. are dead. The slicing maelstrom is just perfect. And they're going to be able to kill the crowd. Wacko goes wacky, but it won't change the result. He gets shut down. It's a nice little reprieve there for BDS and Crowny, but at the end of it all, PSG, they look comfortable. They looked good. There was one punch that BDS snuck in on the first blood mid lane, and then from then, PSG bided their time until they were able to wrest control away from BDS and never really looked back. No, really, really didn't. And then again, like, I, I kind of bring it back to Adam, I mean, this guy is the catalyst of your team. This is the guy, I mean, I mean Lore mentioned it in her interview uh, the other day. It was like, do you feel like the main character? Do you feel like you're the guy who makes plays? And he was kind of like, not really, but at the same time, you kind of have to feel like when he's not on these big playmakers, BDS suffer. Yeah, this was a, uh, one of these games which I think will define a lot of the rest of the series. The early cannon pick, cast your yeah. mind back, first phase, basically seeing nothing yet and saying, I don't think Adam has an answer to this. Is this suddenly going to have to be a first phase cannon ban or maybe there's something else where he does have a counter prepared and it was like game one, we just give the scion as like a, hey, let's try front to back. And next time I'm going greedy and I'm a 1v1 this cannon. We'll have to see where he wants to go from there. Absolutely. But for PSG, I mean... They came in prepped, they came in completely ready. They said, we have a game plan, we do not care about bot lane. And honestly, like even even then, it, it, it didn't matter. Like, all the top side was all they needed. Yeah, we talk about the speed of play of the PCS sometimes, and BDS is also not a super fast-paced team. And if PSG are just gonna have better objective control, better team fighting, better mechanics in those team fights, as we saw from Waco, it's suddenly like, okay, what are you gonna do from here, BDS? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Well. Raz's got to wake up because he's uh, <laughs> he's dead on the desk right now. Raz, Raz, are Rip. you with us? You have to take this, Raz. Tell us what happened. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh, Raz, what happened? what happened? Tell us what happened, Raz. You were, you were, you didn't fall asleep, right? Let me check his notes. Uh oh. All right. Do we got anything in there?
This is something about Levi and something with Glory dying for yep, the last no. series. I don't really like this. Honestly, that was the slowest game that we've really seen at the start. We had two kills for like 25 minutes, and then we got the wake-up smackdown of the century with Wako's uh, Kaisa in there. Draft is up on the screen. And uh, just to like recap what we saw, because there was more action in this draft than in the first 20 minutes, yeah. uh, initial rotation from uh, PSG was fire here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you get this for yourself, you're happy. Yeah, I thought we were going to see more action around that since it's like Maokai, Cannon Flag, yeah. Poke with the Jays. We'll get a few kills. We'll keep the pace up. But, you know, historically speaking for PCS, that's not really the case either. So they, they love their slow games. Where I really <sighs> was baffled a bit was the fact that it was a fourth pick sign and not just Kaiser straight up grabbed there when it got through. So I did my research and I was like, I know Crownies played Kaiser. And I went to his match, and I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. 17 games has passed since he's actually played Kaiser since then. And I think that's a shame on this patch, because it is, it can't even be argued. It's an STAD carry, yeah. and, and you saw what Wako was able to do with it, too. And I was pretty concerned about the just the, the limited range uh, from the composition, because you're going into Jace, Kennen, Maokai, just in general, if you're committed to a fight, it's going to be pretty tough. So Zeri didn't really have them that many moments there's one it was um, close every time it was very time. tough exactly uh, in fact one of the drake fights i know we'll get into yeah. very soon was real was close you could see it burn flashes psg gets a kill gets a drake runs away i'm like damn we can't get nothing no, honestly, it, it, it was it was such a strange game. I think you look at the draft; both team comps have very clear ideas, right? Yeah. You have like heavy poke, you have a lot of like early push, especially on the top side for PSG, and then strong team fighting theoretically for BDS. Yeah. But can you actually find the engages that you need to with BDS? That's always going to be the question. Can you get the right setups around objectives? And that's ultimately what the game stalled out to. It was a lot of walking up to dragons and seeing what we could do. Uh, so first, before we actually get there, I do think it's worth pointing out that BDS did find some attacks around mid lane. They wanted to focus Maple, and yes. they got one kill for it. You know what? I was happy when I saw this at first. I thought to myself, wait, this is a really good setup. You get bot lane priority, you move Lapras up towards the mid lane, group around Shield. you're going to see some really fancy movement where Shield will queue forwards. There'll be an E from Rakan to follow up, and then the W. Like, it's a really good sequence where Hex Flash, E, Q, E, and then W on a Mabel that doesn't have Flash. The amount of space that Lapras can cover because of this setup was really good. Here's what really the main issue is. There was just like, there, it never amounted to anything. And you never yeah. did anything again with it. Yeah, it was tough. And I, I, I thought they played it out so well. You're right. It caught him off guard. He was leaning towards top side because that was closer to the mount. I was like, I personally thought that Jace was going to get away. But the Recon W hits. Um, <laughs> and, and, and for the comp, I was like, okay, you're going to play sides. Surely you're going to play slow. You have great front to back with the Azir and, and, and Zeri. Generally, as you, you, your frustrations are fair... They're fair. They could not find a fight. We uh, had two kills in yeah. 20 minutes, guys. <laughs> Stop this right now. Well, tell me you why they couldn't leave. find a fight, right? Because we, we look at this early Drake, and it's set up. We got 10 players down here, but BDS walk away, and it gets stolen from them. It does. And, I mean, they have the setup. They want to go for it. TVs are coming through. Cheo dies. Now we're one for one. And then the rest of the fight just didn't really amount to anything. It's a late exhaust and it just becomes a disengage afterwards. They're a bit indecisive in how they wanted to play it out, so maybe if they push up towards the Jason uh, Maokai, they would have won out that fight. Now listen here, yes. right? Yes. And I see a way here where Crowny completely cleaned this fight. He has Flash coming into this, it comes it becomes a bit close. I want you to take a look at Lapra, what he's gonna do to Mabel here. He's gonna Flash W him and try and CC him down. I think Crowny can just straight up almost flash over the wall and get in there. Look at the amount of damage he's able to pull where he almost gets him down. He's waiting for his E cooldown, but they're not able to do anything. And I don't know if it's indecisiveness. Maybe I am a bit coping there. I don't know, re-watching it. I just felt like... I wanted more blood, you know, yeah. and I don't think I, could be, I don't think I can be faulted for that. I mean, I, I think everyone wanted more blood. I do think it's really hard to play a lot of those fights as a BDS backline when there's Maokai ult, there's an Ala star, there's yeah. a Kennen sort of running at your face. So so much of the time is spent running away that it's hard to go in. But switching gears, every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, PSG's Wako broke BDS's ankles in the key Dragon Soul fight. He broke their faces too. That was legitimately a great angle that he saw. Not only did he see Sedrani use Q to get away, did not have ulti, actually 10 seconds away from Woo! finding ulti. Zeri wasn't there alongside Sion, so he just had alone time with Azir and was able to get three kills off the back of that one. That was beautiful from Waka. And I know we don't like Kai'Sa in meta too much, we see it too often, but plays like that specifically is why I like the champion. 
80 build, standard 80 carry Kaiser, found a moment in a team fight where good mechanics and good movement can make the difference. And that's what Wako did there. The only thing she had to worry about was the zero ultimate and she was ready for the flash. Absolutely. Yeah. Really, really well done on the team fighting there. But with the loss, BDS have selected blue side going into game number two. Goldborg, what do you think this sort of means for them in terms of their strat coming in? Yeah, I'm actually not even too sure. You'll take a look at the bands here. I don't know if they want the Maokai for themselves. Think that was good for Seto mm. with the saplings as well around though. They are subjectives where they struggled. Maybe easier going for a team fight too. But I think it's hard to say because I don't think draft could have changed much. It was really about the pacing yeah. for that game. I think maybe get Adam into a position where it's uh, you can actually get into a matchup that is more melee focused. Yeah, the Kennen blind pick is something that will go on throughout the tournament. We haven't seen it too soon, too much in play-ins. I think it is a really strong blind. Yeah. I, we've seen it in the LCS from Summit. In general, it's great for strong laners, um, and it's only gotten buffed. So ban it, makes it easier on blue side with how many priority bans are on red. Get that Kennen out of here. We're set for a close fight here in our second series, but PSG have the edge going into game two. Let's see if they can reign undefeated here at Worlds 2023. Do have a pillow around here? Yeah, he's gonna have the head clash jumped on top of him. They will get the knock up and the CC down. The first blood goes over to the Rakan. Damage and the shotgun on the backside! Wacko looking to take out Noob. Good flash away from the Shurima ultimate. And now he's taking down Noob. The ultimate from the Maokai keeps everybody in place. And a double kill for Wacko as the Scion is now dead. Shale running for his life. And there it is! Ace five for none. PSG, they were just as bored as we were. Have to wait a little bit longer. Adam trying his absolute best, but the towers have gone down. The turrets are Whoa. dead. The slicing maelstrom is just perfect. At the end of it all, PSG, they look comfortable. against a king. Seeing against believing. A moment against a moment for the ages. Countless battles, one arena, the realm. The only thing capable of powering the game, the stage, the broadcast, and the worldwide spectacle we know and love, AKA the Cisco Network.